Welcome to the Better Events Podcast. Join two event strategists, Logan Clements and Mary Davidson, who believe we can all create, host, and attend better events. Now let's get started, and thanks for listening to the Better Events Podcast. All right. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Better Events Podcast. We are so excited to have you again this week, so thanks for tuning in. And we're just going to introduce ourselves real quick and then get right into the good stuff. So my name is Mary. I'm one of your co-hosts and uh, I have an event planning business called Events with a Purpose. And I'm joined by my co-host, Logan Clements. Logan, you want to introduce yourself briefly? Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Logan. I'm a freelance event producer based out of Seattle, Washington. I have my own event business as well called Logan Strategy Group, LLC. And... Yeah, I have not, that's like that's my shortest intro I can give you, Mary. I feel like we've been getting better at these each episode. <laughs> yeah, I think they're getting like progressively shorter and shorter, which is good. Hopefully by now you know who we are, but if not, that's okay too. That's that's who we are. Um, and we also want to just start off with a fun little check-in question about something that we've been excited about or working on recently. So Logan, why don't you kick us off? What's something that you've been working on that has been exciting? Something that's been exciting that I've been working on recently has been our workshop about how to prevent your, to present yourself professionally. We just completed another one with a small group this past weekend, and it was really fun. We It's a workshop that we've developed over the last couple months, and it was fun to like revisit and update it and apply. Mary had to see me fill a lot of slides with information of some pro tips, especially in doing events in Zoom and virtual event production tips that uh, I've learned the hard way with some clients over the last couple of months. And it was very fun to feel like I'm paying that forward with this workshop. And it's all about how we believe everyone should be able to present themselves professionally online, whether you're a speaker, event planner, you're interviewing for a job. We do so much virtually that we want to make sure we all look and sound as good as we do in person. So how about you, Mary? What's something that you've been excited about recently? Yeah, well, there's a, there's a new thing that I'm fairly excited about, which is um, I was just brought on to help with an in-person event, which is just like mind boggling to me because it's been so long, you know, since the pandemic. And so, um, yeah, it's a I'm just doing vendor management, which actually I'm very excited to just do a piece of like the pie, the big event planning pie. Uh, I think that's just going to be really nice and refreshing. And I love working with vendors. It's one of my most favorite parts. So it just feels like foreign though. It's been so long. And so I'm excited about that. And cool. yeah. So diving into a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. So we are going to talk about what an event planner actually does. And I think this is a great question because Logan and I were talking about like some of our friends and family members, I think they know that we're event planners, but do they know what we actually do? I don't really know. I, I don't, I'm not sure that they do, which is okay. Uh, sometimes you don't, like, I, I guess I could say, I don't even know what some of my family members do. Like we understand to a certain level, um, but we're going to kind of dive deep into that and what that means. And this could be, you know, if you are considering working at events, this might be very valuable for you. Or if you work with planners, maybe just getting a better understanding about what they do. Um, so hopefully you gain something from this. And I'll just start us off and say, when I think of event planning, like originally, before I knew much about it, I always just thought of weddings. And I would think of The Wedding Planner, the movie with JLo, one of my favorite movies. Her name is Mary in the movie. And I just felt like that was my destiny. So <laughs> thank you, JLo. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Yeah, I think, well, that's what I, I mean, the whole purpose of this is kind of both to have real talk about what do we actually do. And yes, as I joked to Mary multiple times, I think people know that I work in events, but they're not entirely sure, like, what does that actually mean? What does my day actually look like? What am I actually doing when I'm on site? Or maybe they think of, like you mentioned, the wedding planner, Mary, or even like party planners. I think there is like a very... Um, romanticized vision of what the event planner does. And so that's one that I, I love what I do. And so I'm not saying it's all, all, you know, awful things or super hard work in certain ways, but I think there's a lot of, if you're a good event planner, a good event producer, you're going to take care and solve a lot of problems that nobody's going to notice. And so they're not going to realize how much you're actually doing behind the scenes. There's a great um, metaphor about how we should all be, I think it's either like ducks or swans. And it's the idea that ducks and swans 
gracefully go across the top of the water, but under the water, they're actually, their feet are like frantically paddling to keep them going. And so that's what I do joke that I feel like with events sometimes that's the, you know, the client or the event itself is the graceful above water. But if you look underwater, you could see they're like frantically paddling to make sure that everything continues to go according to plan. I have not heard that. I love that. It's a super analogy. Yes. Absolutely. There's this, um, not to digress too much, but there is this YouTube video and maybe I'll see if I can find it and link it in the show notes, but it's an event planner who like is um, analyzing event scenes and movies and like the reality of what it would take to actually pull it off. And I think it's hilarious. So maybe something like that would also help paint a picture. It's, there's a lot that goes into it, um, but it's also very rewarding, I would say. Yeah. And I feel like we, we we should start off with, and Mary, I can go first if you want to time me to keep me honest, but we were going to do this as like a 60 second drill. So we have 60 seconds to describe what we do, which I'm honest, I'm not sure if I'm going to hit that. <laughs> I feel like 60 seconds is not enough time to say exactly what I do. I'm going to time right. you. <laughs> All right. Give me, give me, give me like a three, two, one. <laughs> right. Three, two, one, go. Wow, that was fast. All right, so I'm look as an event planner, I am the person, I say I'm a paid decision maker. I am the person that brings your event vision to life. So the one who actually is coordinating between all of your vendors, your venue, if it's an online platform and making whatever you envision your event to be happening actually happen. So creating the timeline, making sure we actually stick to the timeline, doing all the project management of getting everything aligned and in place ahead of the actual event day and on the event day being the person who's running around is a kind of a frantic visual, but the one behind the scenes who's actually making everything move. Um, when I work as an event producer, I joke, I'm kind of like the orchestra, the conductor of the orchestra. So helping all the, make sure all of the instruments come in at time, on time, go out on time. We stay on tempo and everything sounds really good. So you're kind of like the director of all of the things happening at an event. Did I, did I make it under Mary? Yeah, 40. Four seconds. I am impressed. <laughs> and Good we job. also sometimes get to set tables and break things down and uh, give tissues to upset guests and <laughs> uh, carry Other people's stuff to the car. Signs. Yep, be human signage yes. and point people to go this way. You know, there's there's lots of other less glamorous parts of being an event planner. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I have to call out, we need to like have a jingle whenever Logan does an analogy because <laughs> I think I heard two in there. I love it though. It's amazing. There's so really many. paints I, a picture. I honestly, I will say, I think I fall back on analogies because it is the easiest way to help people understand what I what we do. Yeah. And maybe that's again why we're doing this episode of like why what do you even do at events where I've had to describe it as such as in analogies so that people kind of understand that more because again, they they just don't notice half the stuff that you that you do. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give it a shot, Mary? 60 seconds? Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Um Usually I like to premeditate on these things and so we'll now see we're going what I come off the cuff. This is this is right. this is for the podcast, the the podcast fans. All right. The, you ready? Uh-huh. All right. Three, two, one, go. Okay. So what I do, I at an event, typically it's the kind of the full implementation organization of an event. Um, the planning organization implementation, I should say. And so what that looks like is arriving the day of and coordinating that everything is happening on time. And so that kind of means having a little piece of each of the puzzles. So like knowing who every single person is, whether they are like a volunteer, it's pretty much like any physical person that I'm going to have on site. I want to know who they are and what their role is and make sure that they do it on time. So overall, I would kind of explain it as it is like project management, but it's kind of more than that because like Logan said a lot of times it does turn into like really getting your hands dirty like it's not just overseeing it but it's actually doing the work as well um and a lot of times that does kind of end up looking like random things like not just keeping people on track or keeping the event on time but a lot of other things too then beep time, ding ding, time ding. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of other things yeah I I love what you said there though it's project management but I think also so many people think that what the event planner does is like purely what they see at the event. And they don't understand that often the cases, even in the wedding packages that people do where they have a day of wedding planner, it's often not the first time you're talking and with your event plan, your event planner, your wedding planner is the actual wedding day or event day. You've actually probably been talking to them for a month or two months, even if they're only your day of person. So imagine some of these larger scale events, how much pre-planning goes into making that one day, two day, three day, 
I'm currently in the middle of a month long event, virtual event, um, happen that you, you're not privy to because you're just there for the actual, you're just there for the event part. Um, so that's another part that I think is so interesting with events that it's not so much that we just are showing up and making things happen just the event day, but there's so much more to it in terms of project management, depending again, what role you're in when you get hired on a project. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because I really touched on like the day of during my spiel. And that's because I think that's like what we work up to. And that's like the exciting part, but you're right. There's like a tremendous amount that actually goes on before that to make it a success. So I feel like that leads us into one of the questions that we wanted to cover, which what's the difference between an event planner and event producer. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this Logan. I like to think they're interchangeable in a lot of roles. Um, I've started to take on the title myself as event producer because my background is very much more in production. Um, it was even pre-COVID. Uh, right now I'm in virtual event production. And so that comes down to like the the audio visual, the streaming itself, the how do you actually make things happen and stream places, which is production based. And pre-COVID, I was also starting to do a lot of work in the production sphere. So working with lighting, DJs, MCs, dance teams. So coordinating kind of the production behind that. So that was a big where I just started to try to discern that I wasn't, I, and this is, I'd love to unpack this more, Mary. Like I definitely, like when I hear event planner, I think there's just, again, that like, not a negative stereotype, but it definitely feels like it under represents exactly everything that I feel like I do for clients and on projects. And so event producer definitely feels like one, it pulls in the production background. And then I think gives a more holistic view um, of the variety of kind of clients and projects from nonprofits to corporates to sports teams that I work with. So I don't know if some of it's my own like personal bias of just wanting to grow into something that I don't know if it necessarily sounds more important. It just sounds like it fits me more than event planner. Um, but what's your take on the difference from someone who calls themselves an event planner versus an event producer? Yeah, well, I, I don't know if I have a strong opinion about it. I have been kind of wondering because as I've, you know, met more event planners, I've noticed they, a lot of them, all, we, like we all call ourselves something different. Like we all have different titles, especially for business owners. And then it's like, and you have like that piece kind of tied in there too. And so I don't know what the right answer is, but when I, when I personally do think of it, you're right. Event planning, event planner. I mean, it sounds like a planner, right? And producer to me kind of references that they're actually like producing the actual event, not just planning it. And so they seem different to me, but it almost seems like one could lead to the other. Like maybe you could be both. And then, but then sometimes I'm like, maybe I just need to call myself like an event manager because it's kind of like overall. Um, and maybe I'm getting too much into like the nitty gritty, but event coordinator seems like, um, I don't know what, like a, not a senior as event manager. And so I don't know what we should call ourselves. We should just come up with our own titles. Like, event well, I think that's the, the beauty. That's the beauty of the event industry. I know yeah. it's, there's days where I love it and there's days where I hate it, how arbitrary the event industry can feel because you're totally right. We all, there's no standardization of titles. I think if you're someone who does, if you listen to our episode with Vanessa Loney about RFPs that came out a couple of weeks ago, um, that's often seen in like, she has a great take on it where she does a lot of it for private companies, but often how I've heard it referred to is in federal contracting and they have very specific titles about what you can be and it's based on years of experience and industry and that kind of thing. But you're totally right, Mary. I mean, we come across people all the time who I don't even know if I necessarily when I see their title, I'm like, oh, I know what they do. It's more than being like, tell me what you've worked on. What has your role on different projects been? And then that's how I've been able to figure out where they fit in with me versus like if I'd looked at, heard from three different people and that one's I'm an event coordinator, one I'm an event planner and the other one's an event manager. <laughs> Honestly, just from the title alone, couldn't tell you, like you yeah, said, if they're no, more experienced or not. I need to look yeah. at what ev events they did and what roles they've filled. Um, and again, that's something I love where I say I love hate relationship. I love it about events because so much of you can't really go to school for it. We've learned there are some schools you can go to for event planning, which is awesome. But often you learn by doing. And so a lot of your resume or your clout in the industry comes from your experience. And it's always hard when you're first getting started because it's like, you need the experience to get the gig, you need the gig to get the experience, chicken and the egg situation. Um, but that's where I do feel like the title. And I, if you went back on my LinkedIn, I'm sure I think I, I was down as an event manager a couple years ago. Um, 
and I think I might have had event planner, but I always have, I mark event planner on like any document that is a government document because they don't have that many breakdowns of um, different right. titles. I think that you can be an event planner or like a meeting planner. So I'll put it on that kind of official documentation. But if it's ever a what is your title, write it whatever you want. I will. Um, I've been consistent recently of calling myself an event producer. Nice. I like it. Well, we'll do a check in later on in maybe like. I don't know, at the end of this year and see if we've changed our titles again. Who knows? But you're right. It's about the experience for sure. Yeah. And I'd love to hear from our audience too, if you have any opinions on this. Again, I think it's a, ch a space that's one ever changing. And what are the differences you see between an event planner and an event producer? Do you listen to kind of what I follow the same train of thought that I do? That of like, maybe you think producer is more experienced than planner or, um, again, we just love to hear from you because I think it's so interesting to hear how other people are talking about themselves and what they do. Yeah, absolutely. And when it comes to who hires an event planner or an event producer, whatever we would like to call them, um, for me, I'm thinking like, well, who hires me? And I think there's lots of people who could, you know, have the need for event planning services. But um, for me, it's usually someone in a senior position, like a mm. executive director or, or sometimes if I'm working like with a group of planners, it's like an event lead. Um, yeah. So I would say the decision making individuals, I could, I would also say that I kind of find it easy to start off initial conversations with those who are in a role that um, isn't as senior as that. But so sometimes that helps get in the door, but eventually it always ends up with the decision maker. But what about you, Logan? Yeah, I think even like taking going a little bit more macro than that, in my mind, it's like the people who are hiring an event planner or producer are either somebody, an organization, a nonprofit, a corporate company, or an individual who has a concept, knows they want to host an event, and maybe they have a general idea, idea about what they want, but they don't know where to go from idea in their head to actual execution. And so that's where they would approach an event planner, event producer. And then what I'm finding more in the virtual world is people have a concept, they have the event, they know ex kind of most likely 95% how they want to do it, and they need someone to execute. So it's not helping them get from ground zero, or we would say maybe full planning is how a lot of people talk about it, but they're looking for someone to execute their vision um, or run their whole team the day of because they, they need someone to bring in a whole team of people or whatever that is. But you're totally right with the decision maker um, they tend to be quite executive, again, depending on the organization you're with, because these events tend to be a big deal for everyone, anyone, even down to a couple for their wedding. You know, there's just a little bit more higher emotional stakes, even though it's the decision maker is is the couple. Right. Yeah, no, I'm glad you went um, a little like larger scale to paint that picture a little better. Um, yeah, and I agree it when I think also, you know, more about the folks who have hired me, it's usually situations where they it kind of varies. They, they need complete help. Like that's why they're trying to look for help is because they like, don't even know <laughs> where to begin or what to do with that. So I would say that's the most common for me. So yeah, thank you for jogging my memory on that one for sure. Yeah. And I think before we continue to break down what an event planner event producer actually does, let's take a quick ad break. Insert ad break here. <laughs> Good to keep moving forward. Yeah. Awesome. You got us. All right. And we're back. And I think next part, I think that would be helpful in this discussion, Mary, is to talk about like at an event, what does an event planner actually do? Yeah. I think we touched on this a bit in our 60 second spiels. Um, I, I want to say, what does an event planner not do? Maybe we That's, should talk about wait, what the plan that. is. Yeah, just pause <laughs> yeah. on that for a second. Mary, say that one more time for the people in the back. What does an event planner not do? Yes. Yep. Yeah. And we can do an entire sweet. episode yeah. on creating boundaries for yourself as an event professional <laughs> because it is healthy and great that you want to do all the things, but I have also learned there there is limits that you should be setting. Yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah, I think Mary, I'm totally with you. It's what what doesn't an event planner do or touch 
at an event, um, whether it's actually physically touching it and setting it up and moving it to the spot it's supposed to go, or if it's just metaphorically touching and being aware that someone else is doing that, but you know that they're supposed yeah. to be doing it. <laughs> because like, what's the goal of the event? It's for it to be a success and you're like a key player to make that happen. And so that's kind of why it falls into that situation of like, what do you not do? Because if something needs to be done, sometimes you just have to do it to like, make sure that it's going to be successful. And I think that's kind of the, the, the bigger picture with that. And I think there are, you know, um, ways that you can contingency plans and ways that you can prep for that and things like that. But yeah, sometimes that's just kind of why, in case anyone's wondering why it kind of falls into that category. Sometimes you just got to get it done. Yeah. But I think you're also right. It's totally like back to how you even first probably envisioned it, you know, as the what in the wedding planner movie, you know, at an event, they, have the timeline. They probably have a walkie talkie in their ear or they're nowadays has the phone that they're texting someone of what's happening and they're helping like orchestrate back to my analogy, but they're, they're leading kind of everything that should be happening. And so that's everything from being most likely the first or second person to arrive on site. If it's an on site venue um, in per or virtual, you're the first one to log on <laughs> um, and ensuring that everything's in its right place and set up and, ready to go. And that could be everything from helping marry your in-person event coming up where you're going to be a venue or a vendor manager, you know, let it making sure the vendors, if there's multiple people, they're all set up, they're good. They have everything they need from, I mean, I've ran and gotten random like charging cables to buckets for ice, to more ice for the, to go in the buckets, um, to chairs where they can sit down, bottles of water. Um, you're the one kind of thinking about all those details, even if you're not the person who's actually, um, handing that out to people. Right. Yeah. And I was thinking at some of the past in person events I've done, there's only like a few moments that I can recall where I was like just standing or if I was super lucky sitting because there's always something to do or something to recheck or somebody to go see if they need anything. And, and if you're being like active and really doing your job, that's kind of what you should be doing is making sure that the folks involved don't actually need anything. Um, so yeah, so there I do, you know, really value those moments that I've had though where I could just sit down and like enjoy it for a second. Yes. Well, I, I that's why I say when I'm in planner mode at an event, yeah, it's kind of like go, go, go. Even if everything's fine and going according to plan, you're kind of constantly in motion, checking in on things, getting ahead of looking at things that are coming up, wrapping up things that maybe had just happened, and just kind of anticipating anything going wrong, I guess would be the word, but it's not really going wrong, but going not according to plan. Um, I always say I hate, I, I think I get stressed out when things don't go according to plan at times and events, but I also love it. I thrive. That's where I feel like we get to show our skills as an event producers and planners and being able to show that we're good at problem solving and figuring it out. And those are some of my like favorite event stories later of something not going according to plan and how, how me and my team reacted to it. Um, and overcame it are usually more fun than the events that go 100% smooth and nothing was out of order. Um, those can be actually a little boring, <laughs> I, I feel like. So, um, but yeah, I usually, if you see an event planner at an event, you're probably going to see them just in passing. That's where Mary and I met at an event that she was running. Um, and it was a uh, glancing, hello, goodbye, <laughs> nice to meet you. And then she was off because she was off running the event. Um, and that was my only interaction with you at that entire event. So you knew she was busy and working hard. So that is how you as a, as a non-event person maybe see event planners is that you just see them constantly kind of in motion, but know that they're kind of, there is a, a method behind the madness um, that you're working through as a planner. Yeah, definitely. I'm glad you, you brought up that memory of us seeing each other. Uh, seems like so long ago, but so funny. Um, what's your favorite part about being an event planner or a producer? Because I feel like what we've talked about, I wouldn't say they're negative things, but it sounds like a lot. Like, I mean, just like if I'm thinking if I was an outsider listening and it sounds kind of like a lot, I kind of would be like, well, why do you want to do this? So what's your favorite part? Oh, I, I love like event planners. Also, we are, we are like memory creators. We create moments that people get to come through and experience. And that stands true virtually. It stands true in person. And that is the part I love. Like I love seeing the audience or the guests reaction to what I'm doing. And for some of the events, it's not as direct as like I 
gave them some food and they're really happy about the food. It's more that overall feedback that you get of overall this evening was amazing. I felt really, you know, inspired. And that's, uh, that shows that you've done a good job or my sports events that I do. We have dances that we do when there's big moments on the court. And I get like goosebumps up my arm when we're all doing like the same chant and just seeing people like smiling and having a good time and knowing that I was a part of creating that joy. Maybe they would have done that if not, you know, if I, Logan, was not personally there, but it's really cool to feel like you're a part of something bigger. And so that's what I always feel really good about. Um, and always looking back at the events, it's always a little bit easier when I'm in planner brain, uh, like in my events. I know I'm definitely thinking about all the little details and the little things that might not have gone right. But usually afterward, um, I'm just filled with like the warm fuzzies of helping people have a good time. How about you, Mary? What's your favorite part about being an event planner and producer? Yeah, mine's the same. It's people ask me this and I always say it's when it's over and they're like, ha ha ha. And I'm like, but truly it's when it's over because it feels so it just feels like such a win, even if things didn't go completely according to plan. It's like how you dealt with it. And it feels so fulfilling. And so if you're the type of person who like likes that type of fulfillment, event planning is great because you do an event, you finish it and then you do another one. So it's not just like like it's it's like you're in school. I think of it when I was in school and completed this big project and it just felt so good to be done with it. It's kind of a similar feeling, but you get to do it over and over again and have that same feeling over and over again. So to me, that makes it worth it. The The payoff just feels amazing. Like I said, even if things don't go according to plan, because it's just, you can be proud of how you dealt with that and how you prepared and it feels nice. So yeah, that's my favorite part too. Yeah. I also love the people I meet. Um, I do joke that I feel like I found my tribe of fellow like-minded people in the event industry. Uh, and that is always just a really good feeling when you're surrounded by other people like like yourself. I mean, that's we have a podcast together because we both get excited about some of these things. And yeah. I mean, even the whole concept behind our podcast about creating better events. I think I always I only feel I feel bad as an attendee when I go to events and can clearly tell that the planner who's running it or the client themselves, the person hosting the event is stressed out because I can see, oh, there were five little things you could have done that probably would have made this go smoother. And so like I, it's like the opposite of what we're talking about, that warm, fuzzy payoff, but seeing that stress manifest is what I, I know I get. I get stressed out as an attendee when I'm at events where that happens. But I do love the people that you get to work with and the people you meet who are equally excited about just creating these like moments in time that everybody comes together and enjoys and leaves with whatever message it was that you were trying to get, you know, to communicate at your event. Yeah, the collaboration is something that has surprised me in the event industry. I thought it would be more competitive, but it is highly collaborative um, and I love it so much. It's absolutely amazing. And so that's a huge perk, I would say. It's it's a motivating place to be. So if you're interested in starting or if you're a planner and you feel like you don't have those connections, they are out there. Just start you know, networking and reach out or reach out to Logan and I and we can just chat events and see what happens. And so... Uh, yeah, there's definitely some some fun aspects of that. Yeah, and I think I know we've we've talked about kind of what a planner does, and I'm sure we could even have gotten more granular <laughs> into the exact things we do. But Mary and I know you and I both work with so many different types of clients, different types of event hosts, different types of events that there really is no one size fits all. Here's exactly what we do. But say you're someone who's new to the industry, or you're interested in being an event planner, you've watched Wedding Planner, you want to be just like Mary from the Wedding Planner. Mary Davidson, how would you suggest that someone gets started in events? I would suggest that they volunteer at an event. I mean, I think I, I, people are skilled. I want them to be compensated for their time. So I'm not saying like start volunteering all your time always and never get paid. Just like try to get your foot in the door and see an event like um, I've been talking with one of our other event friends and she just always talks about just like getting your being in the room where it happens, like just see it, see it as an example. And then if you can be a part of the team and you will learn so much because like we talked about before, it's learning by doing. And I can tell you a handful of event planners who would love to have a, a volunteer that is reliable and responsible at their event. So that is super valuable. Yeah, you couldn't have said it any better. I totally agree. I, that's how I got started. My background was more in digital marketing and I was like a piece of the puzzle at events where I was more capturing the event and taking pictures of what happened. And when I fully decided that I wanted to kind of start shifting into events, I sat down a friend 
who was an event planner at the time and was like, how do I get started? And she was like, well, come volunteer at my event. See if you like it. You know, here you go. And just like you said, Mary, like you want to be in the room where room where it happens as a Hamilton reference. But um, but literally is it, it again, it solves that chicken and the egg experience I talked about earlier of like you can't get the gig without the experience, but you need the experience to get the gig. A great way to get started is to volunteer. And as you have that experience and start to show your value and your worth, I'm totally with you, Mary, too. Like then start advocating to be paid. And I think there's a a line you can draw for yourself and everybody's different based on their financial situation, their, you know, societal privilege, all of that things. So I'm not saying it's the same for everybody, but it is a good way to get your foot in the door and start to get that experience. And also for you to figure out if you even like this, um, because it really isn't like the movie, The Wedding Planner. Um, there are times where you're going to be up super late at night <laughs> or up super early in the morning or sitting in a broom closet, you know, trying to type off an email mid event to print something. You know, there are those fun moments um, and it's totally worth it if that's your jam. But I think there's also a lot of people who think they like events. And I've experienced that as a volunteer with the fellow people I volunteer with, realizing that some of them thought it'd be more glamorous than it ended up being. But if you first volunteer and find things that start to make you excited, you can also start to realize like what part of events you like. And if you want to call yourself an event producer or an event planner, or you just want to do nonprofit events, or you just want to do weddings. And the only way you're really going to learn is by doing. And then my only other add on Mary would be that you can always, if you can't volunteer, just pay attention when you go to events, like start to look for who the staff are. Just start paying attention to like, if there's names on their shirts for what company they work for, um, or just starting to look for the people that you might not always notice, which sounds harder than it is. But like, that's what I do when I moved to Seattle and knew no one. Um, my partner, I dragged him to many events and I always joked right before we went in, I was like, so we're here for this concert, but also it's research because I want to figure out who is the company doing the back <laughs> the back of house things. Um, and he's always a good sport to go along with it. But that's just my curiosity because I always want to learn. And you can do that just from even being an, atten an attendee. Um, you can learn more from being as part of the team, but you, you can still learn that way as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, hopefully you've taken something from this and I really, I want to like bring everybody into the event world if they want to be here. So come on in, come join us. And just to recap a little bit about what we talked about. So we've kind of gone through what an event planner is, what an event planner does at the event, pre-event and what it actually means, what we title ourselves and then our favorite parts about it. And so um, feel free to, like I said before, reach out to us um, and we can talk a little bit more about that if you have questions about the event path. But before we go, I believe it is time for our bonus tip. All right. I have your bonus tip of the week. This one comes from our How to Present Yourself Like a Professional workshop. It's all about if you are speaking at a virtual event or maybe you have a really important meeting or interview, stand up. We all sit down for a lot of these calls. We're all used to being on video calls nowadays. But what we can really encourage you is if you can stand up and you don't need a standing desk, you can use boxes or books to raise your camera up so it's up at eye level. But it instantly gives you more energy and helps you then convey that through the screen. I don't know about you, but my posture immediately improves when I'm standing versus when I'm sitting. And it's just a very small adjustment that you can make to your presentation that'll make a big impact on your audience. So don't forget next time you're on a video call, you're given a big important presentation, stand up, utilize all your boxes and books. No one's going to see it behind the scenes. And you'll be surprised that people might notice a big difference. Love that so much. Yeah. Perfect tip. Thanks for sharing. So where you can find us, if you'd like to learn more, or chat more, you can find us on Instagram at Better Events Pod, or you can email us and reach out at the Better Events Pod at gmail.com. And thank you so much for tuning in again this week. We really appreciate it. And we will be back to talk with you next Wednesday. Thanks, everybody.